Mr. Mr. Gillum, and today we're going to talk about frequency tables and pictographs, but specifically today we're just going to talk about the pictographs. Okay, This is what a pictograph looks like. What it does is it displays data with graphic symbols. So when you see pictograph, you need to think pictures. Pictographs have pictures. And looking at our pictograph here, I notice a few things. I notice that these are the sports played by third graders. There's a title. Each column of the sports, baseball, football, soccer, hockey, and basketball. And next to each one of those, next to baseball, there's five pictures. And next to football, there's three pictures. And soccer, there's five, six pictures. And hockey, two. Basketball, four. But what I noticed way at the bottom is the key. Each one of those pictures represents ten students. So all this stuff comes with a pictograph, a title, some columns, pictures, and a key. All these things need to be present on your pictographs. Okay, so let's just evaluate this pictograph. I want to know which sport is the most played. So here's my sports on the left-hand column, right here. And what I want to know is which one has the most students that play the sport. I noticed that baseball has five pictures, football three, soccer six, and so on. I noticed that soccer obviously has the most pictures next to it. So I'm going to say that soccer is the most played sport. How many third graders played football? So I'm going to look at, I know this is the third grade chart. I'm going to look at my football column right here. I'm going to say, okay, there's three soccer balls, so there must be three students playing. But that doesn't quite make sense. Because what our key says is that each one of these three soccer balls or pictures is equal to 10 students. So I need to take those three times 10, which is 30. There's 30 third graders. 10, 20, 30. There's 30 of them. How many third graders played baseball? So I'm going to go to my baseball column this time. I'm looking right up here at the baseball. There's five pictures, so I know that must be five of those. But each one is worth 10, so I'm going to take it times 10. There must be 50 third graders playing baseball. But 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so that's how you read a pictograph. Let's do another one here. This time we're talking about fish consumption around the world. Pounds per person per year. So we're going to use this pictograph to figure out which country is the most fish eaten in. Well, U.S. has four fish. France has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fish. Japan has a bunch of fish. Obviously, Japan is going to be the one compared to India, Brazil, U.S., and France. So I'm going to say the country with the most fish eaten is definitely Japan. And how many pounds of fish does the average person in that country eat in a year? Well, we can find that out because it tells you in pounds per person per year, we can figure out... How many fish are there in this country? Well, we decided Japan was the most. Let's count how many fish there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 fish. However, that's not how many pounds each person eats per year. That number times 12 is the number of pounds per year that is eaten. Because each one of those pictures of a fish up there represents 12 pounds. So not just 12 pounds of fish are eaten, or 14 pounds of fish are eaten, but 168 pounds per person per year. Now that is a lot of fish, okay? But you got to be careful because each person isn't eating 14 pounds. They're eating 14 times 12 because each one of these fish is 12. Okay, so let's move on. Let's ask a few more questions about this graph, okay? How much does the, does the average person in the United States eat in a year? So let's look back at our chart. We're talking about the United States now. How many pounds of fish does the United States eat? Well, I have one, two, three, four fish in there. However, each of those fish is worth 12 pounds. So I'm going to take 4 times 12. I'm going to say 48 pounds per year, per person. Okay, 48. So I'm going to say 48 for this guy right here. 
pounds per year. Now they want to know that they, they're telling me the average Norwegian eats about a hundred and let's call this 120 pounds of fish per year. How many fish symbols are needed to represent this information on the pictograph? So if we want to make a new column, a Norwegian column, oops, I want to make a Norwegian column onto my table. So let's just make room for a Norwegian column. We'll put it right on top. We're going to say this is the Norwegian column. And what they eat is 120 pounds per person. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to write 120 fish up here. That just wouldn't be good. I mean, that would not be a good pictograph at all. I know that each fish is 12 pounds. So after the first fish, that's 12 of my 120. And I go on and on until I get down to zero. So another fish, that puts me up to 24. Another fish. 36, another fish, 48, another fish, 60, another fish, 72, another fish, 84, another fish, 96, another fish, 108, and another fish, 120. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 fish in my pictograph to represent how many pounds per person per year a Norwegian eats. Okay, so it asks us how many fish symbols are needed to represent this information. The answer would be 10, because after 10 symbols, you would be up to 100 and, remember, please change this in your notes, 120 pounds of fish per year. Okay, now, let's make a pictograph of our own for the number of gold, silver, and bronze medals won by Ukraine. So I'm going to label my graph number of medals... One by Ukraine. You need to have a title on your graph. And we're just going to go ahead and write our first bar. And so we have three different columns. We have gold, silver, and bronze. I'm going to put a gold, a silver column, and a bronze. And I'm going to separate that one right there and that one right there. And draw some the rest of my chart here. Now I'll make it look good. I'll do it a little erasing here on the edge. Erase some of that. Erase some of that. Okay. I've got a good looking chart going right now. Separate that right there. And they give me the number of golds, the number of silvers, the number of bronze, but they tell me my key is X, and X equals two metals. So my key x equals 2. So for each x I put in there, it represents two metals. So be careful, because when it says, let's do our bronze metals first, 12 metals, I'm not going to put 12 x's in there, because each one stands for 2. I'm going to put 1, there's 2 metals, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm only going to put six X's in there because I only am talking about 12 metals, and my key tells me that X is equal to two. Each X represents two metals. I should write that in there too, metals. So let's look at silver. There's only two silver metals, so I'm not going to put two X's. I'm just going to put one X because that does mean two metals. And finally, for gold medals, there's nine. So I'm going to put one X, that's two, four, six, Eight, but I don't want all of the X. I just want half as many because I only need one more. So I'm going to write half an X like that. So now I have a good looking pictograph with a title and a column labeling each part, a key at the bottom.